uh, egregious. So I think the uh, tax on this is a little, a little, well, it's, it's ridiculously high. The structure of this, um, I believe everybody was operating for about seven years with the skill games. And, you know, I thought it worked pretty good under ABC. Um, I'm a firm believer in keep it simple and ask questions and listen to people. So what I really wanted to do here today was have a community conversation. So I'm sure all of you have read the, uh, the full set of amendments on this. Um, I've read it a couple of times now. Uh, have it up in front of me for uh, reference, highlighted and ready to go. But I wanted to really put it out to you all to ask questions and have the discussion. What does this mean to you? What's the impact on your business? And what are your thoughts? Because I'm a representative, as we all are, of the people. I don't represent the government. I represent the people to the government. So that's why we're here today, is so I can hear from you, not so you can hear from me. Um, with that, I think we've got a mobile mic. No? With that, we're going to open it up. And I will bring the mic up front so people can ask their questions. And we'll have a conversation. So whatever you want, whatever your thoughts are, if you think this is fair, if you think it's not fair, um, if you think that uh, you like everything in here, um, or if you think there are specific things you could live with and things you can't. So I'm here to listen to you. That's why I also have a pad of paper. And I'd like to point out we have um, Senator Christy Craig with us. Chris, put your hand up. We have my chief of staff, Jill Eiler, who does a great job for me. And uh, former councilman, John Moss. Um, John, thank you for uh, introducing me and getting this kicked off. So who'd like to start with opening up the conversation before I start pointing at people and say, you and you and you? <laughs> come on, somebody's got to have something to say about this. All right, come on up. Let's start a line right over here. Come on up. I want to know what it means to you, what it means to your business, what the changes, kind of what your thoughts are. And if you could, tell me who you are. We also have, uh, we're circulating a couple of pads of paper. Um, just write your name, your contact information, and we'll keep you abreast of what's going on and send all the links so you can watch it directly. All right, first of all, I want to thank Laura and the both senators for uh, hearing us out. One thing I want to say is this governor want to tax us higher than any other businesses. 35% or for the new news, 45%. Why does he want to uh, tax us while the casino are at 18%? Uh, online gaming is at 18%, I think. Mean. Um, so being said that, um, if we don't bring this uh, skill game uh, money back into our small businesses, we will definitely have trouble. Uh, we are already uh, cutting hours for our employees and also uh, letting go of people that we, we had employed for many, many years. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, see why he wants to tax us a lot higher. Uh, and also, he's got all these uh, uh, amendments, uh, especially the one that would uh, take out 95%, I believe, small businesses due to the 35 mile radius uh, limit from the casino and I believe it's 2,500 feet from churches and schools and etc. So that's, that's what I don't understand. Thank you. Thank you very much and we appreciate you. And the 35 mile radius is from casinos, then you have churches, schools and daycares, 2,500 feet. And it does pretty much put out about 90% of the Commonwealth uh, restricts, it, restricts it from uh, any activity. On the taxes, this would be the highest tax thing in the state of Virginia. Um, casinos are at 18%, I believe. And I believe the online gaming is also at 18%. Um, anyone else? Let's get somebody else up here. Come on up here, sir. Hi, everybody, and thank you, Bill. Thank you, Christy, and everybody's here, and 
Thank you, Renik Mayor. My name is Sanket Acharya. I'm from uh, 7 Eleven. I'm representing 7 Eleven here. Uh, last month, I lost $8,000 just in one store, and it's my store. And I have only one 7 Eleven. Since this gaming bill, and since the gaming issue started, a lot of small businesses are returning 7 Eleven right and left. I have returned one my 7 Eleven too. So that's what I really want to show is going to really affect small businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I know a lot of the uh, 7 Eleven stores are independently owned. Um, so let's get somebody else up here. I want to know basically what your thoughts are on this. If you have any questions, concerns, or you want to put anything out on this. I know y'all didn't walk over here just to, uh, you didn't come all the way over here just to listen to me. I came here to listen to you. That's why it's called a communi community discussion and a community conversation. Good. How are you doing, sir? Wonderful. My name is Brett Creekmore. I'm a retired Chesapeake police officer. Been in Tidewater my entire 56 years of life. Uh, I had three 7-Eleven stores. Two of them are up for sale now because I just can't make it anymore. I'm hanging on to the last one with every ounce of my, my body. Me and my wife work 50, 60 hours a week, me and her, on top of the labor that I, I had to put in there. And uh, I'm, I'm just too old. I just can't do it anymore. I, I've begged, pleaded, uh, don't don't know what else to do, but uh, I want to continue this fight with y'all. Thank you very much. And if you could, come on up, talk to me, and then um, if you want to discuss any specific pieces, please, let's do that as well. Um, I'm happy to go through any and all of it. Come on up here, young lady. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, guys. Um, a lot of y'all know me because I've been following y'all with y'all casino incident. Um, I'm sad once again that this happened to you. I'm from Norfolk, Virginia. Where y'all go, I go also. I'm Rhoda Young. I'm running against Bobby Scott in the 3rd District to make sure these type of things don't happen to our small businesses. We need somebody to speak out for us. And it's absolutely wrong and disgusting what they're doing to y'all for these larger casinos. I'm Rhoda Young. Thank you, Reverend. All right, anybody else? Come on. I'm going. Please. <laughs> Dee, you're very articulate, you so know, over I to you. Can't, I, I, I'm Dee Oliver, and my husband and I are Kelly Stavron. So I think we're all very disappointed with what's happened, um, especially with the decisions the governor has made. And we all supported him. Yes. And he ran on small business. Yes and supported small business, yes. and we are small business. Yes. Yes. And yes. you can't pick winners or losers, and that's exactly what we, right. exactly what they're doing to us. And unfortunately, what everybody or some representatives have forgotten is that COVID killed us. It raised the cost of goods, it raised our rent, it raised our minimum wage. We needed to bonus out our people to keep the people that would come to work at the time. And these machines helped us keep our lights on, turned our water on, kept all these people employed. And now we have gone on for a number of years with them. We've worked well together with the lottery system and with the casinos who are a big conglomerate that have come in to put us out of business and with Rosie's. And now all of a sudden, we're the bad people. And it's really wrong. And we just really need to stand up and say, you can't put the moms and pops and the families out of business because this big entity has decided to come in and they don't want to play with us. Um, they're picking winners and losers, and I just think it's just dead wrong. It's not what, it's not what America's based on. It's free enterprise. Thank you, Dee. This country's based on free enterprise and those who get out and risk it all for their businesses. So let's hear from a few other folks. And really, I'd like to hear on some of the inner workings of this and how it would or would not affect your businesses uh, based on um, the uh, way you'd have to redeem um, the payments 
whether you issue vouchers or redeem cash from the host locations ticket redemption terminal. I want to know your thoughts on how you think it should be run um, and give me some additional ideas. Can you elaborate on that? Because I don't know about that. Piece of sure. So basically in the um, amendment, it talks about uh, where you would only be able to redeem you, the machine. You can issue vouchers if you win, or you can redeem for cash at the host location ticket redemption terminal. So if you're a 7-Eleven, you'd have to have a place that you could redeem and pay out the cash. If you're a restaurant like here at uh, Mom's, you'd have to have something set up where you could pay out for folks if they receive cash or uh, vouchers, but you'd have to have a ticket redemption um, terminal here to be able to cash in your winnings. And on some of the um, things, it would be paid for uh, or paid out with a money order. So really having an understanding of that and I believe that uh, one of the recommendations came through was, hey, let's go back to making it simple. So keep it simple. So a simple way to do this from a tax perspective would be pay 30 or $40 a day per machine and have whoever the distributor of the machines is or the manufacturer um, collect the revenue and pay it in taxes to the Commonwealth. Um, that would generate between uh, Two hundred and two hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars. Uh, sorry, two hundred and two hundred and ninety-two million dollars a year in tax revenue. It would be very simple to do. Um, the manufacturers of the machines would be able to collect the revenue off of it and transmit it once a month to the Commonwealth. Super simple. If you want to collect the data off of the machines, you normally uh, close the machines out daily, probably, right? Most of you guys weekly. When you do your closeouts on the machines, daily you and daily and weekly. So when you do the closeouts on the machines, upload it to the cloud or upload it to the manufacturers. I'm sure that's how it works today. Um, as you upload that, upload it to the Commonwealth as well. So have it go direct from wherever you're uploading it today to the Commonwealth. It's not hard to do this. It's not simple. Um, ABC comes in and checks every one of these establishments all of the time. They've done it during um, the last seven years. They come in, here's what's going on. They want to check the seals on the machine. You can check the seals on the machine, check whatever you want. It's not hard to do, it's not rocket science. It's pretty simple. If you're just trying to collect the data off of the machines and that's your concern, when it's uploaded daily and weekly and probably do month end closeouts, when that's done, upload it to the cloud, provide it to the Commonwealth. It's not rocket science. Um, Let's see, there's in here it talks about the distribution of the funds. And as we did the original lottery, um, I would like to see any distribution out of this within the Commonwealth tax strategy go into what we refer to as a lockbox. So let's say we provide it for schools. If it goes to schools, don't reduce the school's budget and then backfill it with this. Keep the school budget where it is today and then augment that budget with the taxes coming from here. Um, we refer to that as a lockbox, so we ensure that it goes the right direction. Um, you know, pretty much the rest of this is pretty simple. Um, the first enactment on this has it where it's going to go um, and limit everything. No distribution operators or host location licensees shall place uh, or maintain any electron electronic gaming. And then within the host location premises that's located within 35 miles from a casino gaming establishment, um, we said 35 miles away from any racetrack or satellite facility operated by a limited license holder. Um, then it walks into um, churches and daycares and um, everything like that. From an operational standpoint, just here to listen to you guys, that's why it's called a community conversation. So. I wish we had a mobile mic, or maybe I can put this down, but I'd like to hear more from you guys on this. I'm, I'm kind of loud. Okay, uh, be I'm, nice and loud. Yeah, I, all these other exclusions and inclusions don't matter 
if the schools and the casinos, because that's going to wipe out 90% of them. Yep. Yeah, it wipes out pretty much or uh, eliminates about 95% of the Commonwealth if you look at the map. So, so basically, the governor is telling us that he don't want that tax money. He don't want those employees that we all employ. Those got to be the first ones to be addressed. Well, I, I think, to be honest with you, on the location, um, that's, uh, you know, again, and I love our governor. We just have a different policy uh, positions on this issue. And, you know, I don't have to agree with everybody, and they don't have to agree with me. That's what makes America great. We're all founded on our own ideas, and you either like what I do or you don't. It's okay. I either like what you do or I don't. Um, we don't have to always agree. But on this, from a tax perspective, I think, and a policy perspective, I think putting small businesses that are struggling out of business, I mean, I know that uh, cost of gas has pretty much doubled in the last three years. When I've gone into 7-Eleven or I've gone into Wawa, I've gone into most establishments, I've not seen the price of a Coke double. Um, I think the reason for that is we've been augmenting your income with the skill games machines. So those are the types of things that I'd like you to discuss with me today so I get a better feel for this. Um, I've talked to a couple of business owners who said these skill games basically pay the rent, uh, which allows me to maintain everything else I'm doing, um, pay my salary, my, my staff a little bit better, and it's allowed me the opportunity to keep prices low when they've gone high on everything else from my standpoint. So I'd like to hear some more from other people on that. Um, as long as it's not paid political uh, commercial, I'd like to hear <laughs> on you know questions and direct comments, please. Okay, I'm not paid. I am an independent news reporter out of yes, Virginia. Um, okay. I have been the people's voice for many of years. Um, I'm just very concerned about why is it that we're suffering allegedly for money and income, and here is income that we can use as taxable income for our community instead of adding toes on our industry and taking people hard-earned money. But we got people that are saying, okay, we got an extra $50 and we want to sit down inside this convenience store and relax and take a mental break and spend our money where we choose to. And the state of Virginia can tax that money instead of taxing the industries. Why not capitalize off that? You're, you're not <laughs> arguing with me on that because I, I kind of agree with you. We're, you know, we're a right to live, work, and play state. Um, if you want to spend your money at a casino, if you want to spend it at a Rosie's, or you want to spend it in front of the electronic gaming machines, I'm good with that. If you want to have a piece of peach pie while you're doing it, I'm good with that too. Don't tell my wife I said that. <laughs> Anyways, I want you to be able to come to mom's, enjoy lunch, and play the machine. Have a beer and play the machines. I want you to be able to do it all over the place. Um, I think it's a great idea that we're doing it with 21 and above. Uh, I actually think that's a great restriction on here. Um, I really think, and if you're gonna talk to my wife, tell her that I said you can sit down and have a plate of broccoli and a glass of water and play the machines. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, I mean, this is America who we wanna be able to spend our money where we wanna spend our money. Um, I think the tax rate of 45% or even 35% on here is uh, a little bit high, and I've heard at least two or three people here say the same thing. I, I don't know if the rest of you guys are pretty good with paying 35, 45% in taxes. I'm not. Um, but I see some heads saying, yeah, that's a little too high, and some other heads nodding yes, but I think that's yes, I agree with you, not yes, I want to pay more in taxes. <laughs> so let's get a couple more people to uh, ask some questions or point some things out. Yes, sir. And you can come up or you can yell from the back. Your call. Good afternoon, everyone. I don't know what's so good about this afternoon, but yeah, we're all uh, disappointed. Um, I own a small gas station. Uh, I have about four staff. I've reduced, I'm reduced to two now. Uh, obviously, since the pandemic, we, have, we all have a lot of overheads now. Uh, can't pay the utility bills. Uh, what the machines did was at least we could meet the end. And, uh, since it's gone, since November, we're just trying to catch up, but it's getting worse and worse. Uh, we're disappointed. We were hoping that, okay, the amendments would come in, but they'll be a little sensible. Um, 
but this is like, I don't know if he has, uh, it's a term, the veto, it is practically just vetoing. Like you say, 90 plus percent, it's, it's gone. So we do have hope, but I'm hoping that uh, we have a week and uh, some kind of uh, arrangement comes and sorts our problems out. Because we don't know how we're going to run the businesses. Um, it's a matter of when. Um, just a gentleman in, um, was talking to me that one of the staff was helped uh, after the pandemic. She's a single mother. We could lend some more extra money so she could help if she lost her car and stuff. At the moment, it, we're in that position. So we don't know. We're just hoping that uh, you will listen to us and some kind of a compromise has to be done. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, anyone else? Boyd, please, come on up. Boyd. I'm Boyd Melker. My name is Kelly Stavins. And uh, first of all, when we say casinos, that means Rosie's and the off-track betting sites. And so when we say casinos, let's put all of them together just for the sake of simplicity. Now, with the, let's start with the 35 mile ridiculous uh, limit on this thing. Obviously the governor, this is a virtual veto, and obviously the governor doesn't really want these machines. But, <clears throat> so they've stuck that in there. And then 2,500 feet from a church, school, or daycare center, that takes Smallville, Virginia, out of the question. Any, any small town is going to have a church or school somewhere nearby, so that kills them. Obviously, they would just want to run us out. Um, so we can't stand for that. We're not going to put up with it. Now, it, in regard to the taxation, to add insult to injury, 45%, are you kidding me? Then we get the crumbs. We do all the work, and that's not acceptable either. Now, Governor Northam had it right somewhat. He was a little bit expensive, but if we if we have the twenty thousand machines that they're letting us have at thirty dollars a day, would come out about forty dollars a day would be two hundred ninety-two million dollars going into the coffers of the state. <clears throat> at thirty dollars would be two hundred million. I think my math is right. But it's close. And it's so much simpler than what they have done to themselves and to us. Because if this new bill does happen to pass, we're going to have rules and regulations and a lot of work to do uh, at the end of the month, or actually daily, just to keep these records, and they're totally unnecessary. If they charge by the day, hopefully $30, then basically they need one person to administer this. They, they collect the, che the checks from the, manu from the distributors once a month, they go to the bank, and then wait another month and do it again. And they've already got this system into place. Because they were doing it for North, um, and then ABC has already vetted everybody. That's it should go under ABC. We don't need the lottery. They don't like us anyway. They're the ones who've been fighting us since day one. Yeah. So we don't need the lottery to, to do this. ABC can easily administer this, and they can check IDs if they want. They come in, check our bottles to make sure they're being scraped, and they come in and check the IDs on the people playing the games. And if they catch somebody underage, then write them up and give them a, a graduated penalty on that. One strike, 500, two strikes, 5,000, three strikes, you're out. So that's pretty simple. Um, and then, uh, what else is there that are unacceptable? Oh, oh the referendums. So now, <coughs> they, th this bill, Youngkin's bill, has referendums in it. Now, can you imagine the TV advertisements that the casinos are going to throw out there and they're going to have people shooting each other in the convenience stores. They're going to go as nasty as they can, and we might not even stand a chance on the referendums. So um, Rouse has that right. Rouse's bill is good, and that 25% tax is good, too. I just think that there's a better way to do this. Um, but 35 45% didn't cut it. So I guess that's it. Tell me a little bit about <clears throat> how this has affected you when we struggled through the pandemic, then you had the opportunity to bring in the the machines and then what has that been able to allow you to do that additional income with your employees with your staff with your your prices as a whole great question um we could keep what's happened before the COVID, we were pr price of hamburger out at i think a dollar 83 a pound now it's close to four dollars that's excessive and it's not just a hamburger it's everything and everybody here sees it in the grocery store on bread eggs whatever but the, the machines have allowed us 
to keep our prices down. We still had to go up somewhat, a little, but we, we can't double our prices and stay in business. And the machines kept us from having to do that. Because I mean, if you're charging $10 for a hamburger, we can't go to $20 just like that. The public is just going to stay home and, and cook out or whatever. So the machines help us with that immensely to keep the prices down. Also, the machines have helped us give everybody raises and keep the good help and pay them top dollar. So the machines are basically a godsend to us. It's a lifeline to our business. Um, and a lot of the small operators have got to have these things or they're going to go under, and that would be a shame. And at the end of the day, we helped put Governor Youngkin in there, and now he's pulling this on us, and it's not right. And we got to stand up to it and go for it. Thank you. This, this is a conversation because I'm going to have a conversation with the governor tonight. So I'm going to relay the comments and the sentiment from everybody here. And that's why I want everyone to come up and just kind of give me your thoughts. Yes, sir. Uh, just and come thing. on up. When you talk to the governor tonight, yes, sir. tell him that thousands of people in this area heard him say he was for the game machines for small yes. businesses. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. I will make sure I write that down right now. Yes, sir. On Tony McCraney, he said that. Thank you all those people who are here today. Uh, just Nick Patel, I own a couple convenience stores. Again, uh, life has been tough since the machines went out with the business and with the staff. So how do we compromise together? In, in the bill, there was nothing about 35 mile range from the casino, or there was nothing about 45% tax. So I don't know where that came from. So we urge the senators and the delegates to see if you have, I urge them to see if you can work together for, for the businesses. There, there's thousands of businesses like mine. They are the backbone of Virginia. So you need to support us any way you can. With the taxation and with the 35 mile radius and 2,500 feet of uh, church and everything else, I don't think so anybody can survive. So that's the message that I have. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Come on up. I have a question. Um, he had a concern about the security of the machines being in the store. But I'm still concerned about the machine. She he thinks it's safer for her. Otherwise, it goes down in the store. There's nobody in the store after 7, 8 in the evening. So if there are people playing the machine, in fact, it's safer for well, the staff who's running the store. Um, so the, the last comment was on safety and security in the stores and the machines. And, you know, frankly, <coughs> most of the stores have an ATM in them anyway. You have safes uh, in them because you take cash for a lot of what you sell. So... Uh, having additional people in the, the stores um, is helpful as well. So I get it from a security perspective. I was looking for one thing that uh, was in the amendment. It talked about having the regulation ready by July of 2025. Well, that's a year plus out. January 1, 2025. Yeah, you can start applying January 1st, but the regulation was going to be 20 July 2025, which, here you go, the board shall, by July 1st, 2025, promulgate additional regulations to establish a comprehensive mechanism for verification of identity, age, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that uh, this is something we put in place pretty quick. Uh, it's been working very well. Um, and that it's something we can turn back on like a light switch pretty quick. I think that the taxing on this can be done just as quick if we keep it simple. Um, reporting can be done pretty quick if we keep it simple. We need to push the bureaucratic side of this out of the way and focus on the operational side and making that happen. And boy, did so, you have something else, sir? Yeah, so they're Come on up here. On July the 1st, that way everybody can hear too. Well, they're saying um, you can apply for $9,000 uh, for the license on January the 1st, 2025, and then they will start 
acting on that on July the 1st, 2025, assuming that they have the software that the state has to put up $25 million for in, in order to keep track uh, real time of what's going on in every machine. And so if that's not ready, then we're still at their mercy on a time frame. We don't have that long. A lot of people don't have that long. We need to get going right now. And actually, if we go back to Northern or his way, we can start that immediately. And they don't have to put up $25 million up front. They don't need any money um, to do that. This is it, The systems are already in place. And let me mention one more thing, too. Youngkin's bill only allows us to have, what, two machines, maybe three, I forget. That's not right either. No. And the truck stops should get 10, the rest of us should get five. I think we can make it on that and then, and then pay the taxes accordingly. And that, let's just say they do it at $30 a day, $300 million, uh, $200 million to the state per year. They already knew that up front, assuming that they fill all 20,000 places. That is going to be an incredible amount more than even if they implemented the 45% tax that they want to do because of the draconian measures, they're not going to get those 20,000 spots anyway. Right. So we're talking big money here. This is real simple. So that's where we are. Boyd, thank you. And what Boyd was talking about was the $25 million that they would loan to the lottery, Virginia lottery, to support the procurement and implementation of a real-time central accounting system for electronic gaming devices in accordance with 58,144,216 of the code. Uh, basically, I go back to keep it simple, make it easy, and let free market dictate. And boy, if you want to put 10 machines in your establishment, we should tax you on 10 machines. Yeah. Right. If, you, if you determine that's what you can cover and handle, that's what we should do. If uh, a truck stop says they can handle 20, give them 20. Um, let free market dictate and decide and share it across the board. You know, Sir. Let the business owners here know what they can do to help you going forward. You can reach out to the governor's office. You can reach out to your delegate. You can reach out to your senator and tell them what your thoughts are. Um, I'm going to talk to the governor this evening. Um, we're friends. I support the governor. I'll always support the governor. Um, we just have a disagreement on one or two things. And we have a different policy uh, policy uh, idea and concept on this. So I believe we should keep it simple. Yes, ma'am. Do the governor understand that this not just affecting the small business owners, it's affecting the customers that came into the store. He's looking at a lot of people that's not going to vote him back in because of his decision that he made on today. Well, let me... Let me just be honest with everybody here. The governor is only a one-term governor in the state of Virginia. So uh, he doesn't run for re-election. Um, but the... Uh, he won't be a favorable person, yeah. whatever he do after yes, the governor. Yes, ma'am. I understand where you're coming from. Um, we're not here to threaten the governor. We're here to have a conversation where we can provide information to the governor. I don't want to see as though if we're speaking about the governor because y'all are friends that we're threatening him. We're just having an open mic. Yes, ma'am. And I want to feel comfortable speaking about how his decision has affected so many people around us. Yes, ma'am. And if people want to come in and put their money in the machines, I think they should do it all day long. Um, sir. Hi, my name is Bill Duke, and uh, I want to make it clear that I am not a wagering man, but I would be willing to wager that there are two types of people in the world. People like me who will go into a bar with some friends and might stick some money in one of these machines. Not me, but some of my friends. But uh, And then there are other people who go into casinos because they love to be in casinos. Mm -hmm. I, I know about that. And uh, I, I won't go to them. But... It seems to me that we should ask ourselves, how much is your business hurting casinos? Do you think the casinos are all going to have to close because you guys got some machines in your 7-Eleven? Of course not. They're just, they're just trying to maximize their profit. But they're going to make a profit. Yes. Got it. Four. And after this, please go next door and grab some pie. They have really good pie here, and we want to thank Mike and Laura for 
allowing us to use their establishment and chat with folks. So I think it's important for people that are not in the restaurant business to understand that it's a restaurant has to be able to, it's unusual for them to be able to pay their own bills in the first two years. It's a very, very tight margin. You have to hit that. And a lot of restaurants were just opening when they were being forced to close. So they were already behind the eight ball. And then when they reopened, they had all these loans to pay back that they had to take out to keep them open. So they're even further behind the eight ball. There's obviously a lot of waste. You deal with fresh food. It doesn't keep us so long. It's a really, really hard business. And if you go into restaurants at all, you know who they employ? A lot of single moms. I was a single mom who worked in restaurants for nearly 20 years. I see the small business owner who gave my younger daughter her very first job 10 years ago. They're employing our teenagers, getting them out into the work world, and they are employing people who live most hand to mouth. And it's really important to keep these businesses open. And if these machines help them do that, let them have them. Amen. Thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? All right, well, I want to thank everybody for coming out and having the conversation. Um, my position's kind of apparent in the conversation I'm going to have with the governor this evening. Um, I think we've got some great recommendations. Um, and just like Ralph did, he has the opportunity to uh, fix this and move it forward. So thank you guys. Thank Mike and Laura for opening the restaurant and allowing us to be here for it. And his wife makes awesome pies, so please grab a piece of pie and just tell my wife that I had broccoli. Thank you. Laura? Hey, Laura. I'm not sure where the on-off button is on this one.